Hey, welcome to the Birdie Dyke Podcast, friends. I'm sitting here with my, well, my last time I'm with my host over here, Bob Ackerman, for a while. He's going to be leaving me to move to San Diego with his other kids. Yes. And uh, so this is going to be the last podcast for a little while, at least in the Bernie Dyke Studios. And so today is going to be a good day. Cheers again to that, Bob. I'll cheers to that, Bernie. I am so freaking happy to be here with you. And I may actually just come back once a month to uh, destroy your studio. You need some help over here. I don't know. Who should be my replacement? A lot of people said Brad Pitt because he looks a lot like me. Yeah, but it really it just keeps coming back to that kid from uh, Napoleon Dynamite, um, whatever his name was, John Heater or whatever, one of those kids. But yeah, we don't have, you know, I got Maury Povich a few times. Uh, Jerry, they said Jerry shows almost getting canceled, that he was looking for a new position. So I might, you know, give uh, old Springdang a call and see what he's up to. I like your hat. Popeye. Hey, Gilligan. Oh, skittly diddles. It's the last skittly time. Diddle. It's the last time Gilligan gets to uh, to hang with the skipper, so, you know. I'm going to put my hat Hey, on. that's a skipper style hat. There I do. Go. You know, I'll switch hats. It'll be like wardrobe changes. Can I, uh, let's, let's go ahead and dive right into this because I want to have a nice podcast, but I do want to go ahead and share something with you. And uh, hopefully, it, I, I'm pretty sure that most of the people out there have somebody that they know. Uh, but this is why I'm leaving, and this is what happened, and this is crazy to me, okay? Complete crazy to me how three weeks ago, I was not going anywhere, and next week, I'm leaving. So, yeah. my daughter, Shayla, as you know, Bernie, mm -hmm. has a heroin problem. I don't care if she's listening. I hope she is. I pay for her phone. She has a very bad heroin problem for two years now. Plus, she's 25. Mm -hmm. Brought her back to Phoenix lots of times. She's been cleaned up, detoxed. And as I go further along with my process of learning about this addiction, like once they clean up and come out of detox, they are like Richard Simmons, man, the most euphoric high ever when they're clean for like a day or two. Like after they get out of this 12-day detox where they almost die, shooting up heroin is the worst thing ever. So... Bam, I'm so happy. I'm going to conquer the world like the greatest, like more energy than you and I would have if we were going out there to grab the bull by the horns. Once you're detoxed for 12 days, sobered up, cleaned up, come out, ready to go. Literally, I've seen this three times with her now over the years. And then and, and she relapses. She called, oh, I relapsed. So back to shooting up a week later, and it goes right downhill from there. So... Last weekend, I'm sharing some time with Angela, my other daughter, who lives in San Diego. I already know Shayla lives in San Diego. Had an epiphany, found her on... All right, this is making no sense. Let me just put it this way. I, I, don't, I don't want to describe the whole thing again, because it's just it's horrible. Actually, I'm going to, because you can chop all this the hell out of mm -hmm. me. Yeah, right? I can do whatever. Did I already tell you this, though, personally? I think I told you via text. How you ran into her, yes. or where you found her. Yes. Uh, yeah, you sent me a message on where you found her, which was pretty heartbreaking for me to, to read that, so I can only imagine what you were going through. Well, she always texts me, and I pay her phone bill so I can get in hold of her. And you know, she hasn't talked to me in a couple of weeks. The last time she talked to me, she told me uh, that, you know, Dad, I've got to head back to my tent. I'm living on the street. I'm homeless. I live on an island by a river, and the tide comes up, and I can't get back to my tent. That was the last time I spoke to her. And we, you know, I don't, as much as I'm supportive, I don't just go, okay, that sounds great. Have a good night at your tent. I sometimes give her some shit, which she gets mad about. So we, uh, I travel to San Diego to see my daughter, Angela. We have a great two days there, La Jolla, opposite side of everything. And Angie insists that on Sunday before I go, it's like 11 a.m., I have to be at the airport at 3, that we go find Shayla. I'm like, how are we going to find Shayla? She's <laughs> somewhere in a tent. Right. All right, we drive around 20 minutes through the shithole neighborhood that Angie thought she might be by because of a hotel she once stayed at there. And, uh, Shayla did and by where her storage was where she lost all of her stuff 
and I'm driving around and I'm starting to feel not good, like sick to my stomach because I'm getting anxiety about what do you mean we're just going to drive and find Shayla? I was cool with this. I had texted her two weeks ago. I'll talk to her again. Nope, we got to go find her. Driving around the neighborhood, up and down streets, people laying on their backs, you know, in the worst skid row looking shit. Mm-hmm. Cool, we're not finding her. Then we see their little river there, the San Diego River. We park our car after we drive for a little while, walk for 20 minutes down a sidewalk that has no, there's no recreational area there. It's just a shithole trench with swamp and signs that say, watch out for rattlesnakes. And, you know, there's no, there's no hiking. There's nobody hiking out there for pleasure. Walk for 20 minutes, looking out over 10 foot reeds and swamp infested thorns on the sidewalk, come to an overpass. I walk, we get to the overpass. After 20 minutes walking around, I'm like, there's no way we'll find anybody out here. You can't see it. There's nobody here. Nothing you could ever see out there. It's so hidden. Decide, all right, Angie, let's go down here. We're right by this overpass of a freeway. There's a train that goes over the top and two freeways. So we're an overpass underneath it. And there's, you know, we hike down there. There's no trail. It's thorned up. It's muddy. It's disgusting. And we stand there for a minute. And I look around. I go, I think we're close. And I suddenly said, I think we're close. And we've been walking and driving forever. And I just yelled across the river, which is probably 50 to 60 yards. Shayla! Ackerman! It's your dad! I hear a dog bark. She has her dog with her. Mm-hmm. So out of nowhere, the cool part of this story is I was directly across from where she was. It's like you sensed it. That's crazy. And the freakazoid that came across rustled out of the bushes. Jesus. Worse than Gilgan's Island. Swamp father, I call him. Jesus. I'm like, hey, is my daughter over there? Shayla Ackerman. She's got, she's got a dog with her, white pit bull. I go, yeah. So he hikes me across the river, shows us how to get across. We go in up over our knees. I tried to tell you they were your shoes because I wanted to keep your shoes, but they weren't your shoes. (laughs) (laughs) I really wanted to keep your shoes. I know. Those are nice. I'll get you a a pair of shoes. I walked a mile in your shoes, bro. Felt good. My game is better. Hey, that's why I didn't put horse up. I didn't want people to see how good his game's getting. Oh, it's still coming. But finish your story. Finish your story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fast forward it. Well, you can go, I'll cut this off anyway. We don't need to fast forward anything. You can, no, keep I'm, going. I'm testing your editing skills. I like to keep you on point. You blessed me with the last one so I didn't have to edit very much. So <laughs> Really? All right, well, guy walks us across the way. You know, we have to, we were running up to our knees in muck and mile. It's not like the San Diego River. Let's go fishing. It's disgusting. It's terrible. And there's nobody around this place at all. It's like muck and mile underneath the overpass with crazy shit painted on walls. You know, if you don't fucking like it, go fuck it. Like things weird graffiti, not gang, like weird, like California graffiti. Go fuck yourself, bro. Eat kale. Like that on the road. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, guys, like, how'd you find us over here, man? How'd you, how'd you find this place? I said it's uh, God's GPS. I don't know how to explain it. Dude, I literally was right across the way and That's never crazy. yelled. I didn't yell one time. We drove 20 minutes, walked 20 minutes, decided to go to one spot, and I made one statement. It was directly 12 o'clock across from her. Jesus. He made me, uh, you know, uh, I befriended him. I was cool with him. Brought me over to where Shayla was. Shayla's standing there. I'm like, let me see my daughter. Okay, and she's over there. And I walk, like, it's just fucking bizarre. <laughs> this is a bizarre, surreal moment. Walk through this shit. There's Shayla. You ever seen the movie The Ring? Yeah. The girl with the hair down? Yeah. That was exactly what that looked like. She didn't pick her head up. Her hair was knotted in her face. Stood there as me and, and my daughter showed up to see her. <laughs> Which would probably blow her mind on Easter Sunday morning. Didn't even know I'm in San Diego. I'm on an island somewhere. I'm right in front of her. Head down. Jesus. Emotionless. I'm not even joking, Keegan. This is true story. Her fucking hair in her face knotted because she hasn't bathed in like a month and uh, wouldn't even pick her head up. <laughs> hey, Shayla, it's me and Angie. All right, and we put our arms around her in like a little circle hug where she just sat there emotionless, like dead. Was like, there a bunch of people around? No. 
Now, there's the uh, Swamp Father dude who walked us over there. And he's like, be, be cool, dude. My roommate is a very private person. I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't fucking care, bro. I'm cool. You're all private. I, I want to be able to see my daughter. So, no, there was probably, I would guess, there's three to five people that live on this little fucking island. And it's their hardcore heroin shit right there on that island. Seriously, it's, uh, he, whatever. It's, it's, then, then, <laughs> no, there was three to five people. It's a very small little thing that, you know, twice a day, you can't get to it. The water literally comes up right by our tent <laughs> when the hot tide is high. Right. And, and it's not a recreational area. <laughs> They're under a, it's, and, yeah. So the cops basically leave them alone out there. Cops can't even find them. They they fly over in a helicopter. You couldn't see her because her tent, her little pop tent right there, is covered with thatch. It's better. It's better than the best survivor or naked and afraid you ever seen. Thatch covered over the top of it. Palm fronds. They're in the. No, they're not gonna. No, nobody's gonna find them out there. Jesus. I have no idea how I found her. She was so fucking. She looked like a beaten dog, bro. Like when you when you see a dog that's been beat beat and they keep their head down and will look at you won't look at you afraid to make you know I mean, is she being taken advantage of out there probably yes probably not taking advantage of it that's part of the deal she didn't have a job she's been out there forever she's living in the, finally she comes around we sit by her tent car batteries around with little solar chargers and all these crazy things that you're gonna live off the land. She tells me, Dad, I think I got, I, I got, finally opens, she finally starts waking up a little bit to our presence. So she's coming out of it. Well, well what, coming out of it before to... she got her fix, because we woke her up on a Sunday morning, and then after we, that's another story. Mm -hmm. I think I found something that's worth money, Dad. I don't know, it's, it says Tiffany on it, so she rumbles through her stuff, and you know, me as you're sitting there, okay, cool. And uh, she brings out a little studded earring, which is really, literally a nice earring. But when she opened up her purse in her rubbling tent, I saw the early pregnancy test in her purse. I didn't say anything. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, okay. All right. I'm like, yeah, that does say Tiffany, and it is a diamond. Yep, you can. Yep. And, uh, yeah. I <coughs> uh, love you, Shayla. Um, hey, how about this, Shayla? Um, I'll come back next weekend, and I will bring a truck, and you and your dog and whatever you want to bring come with me we'll come back to my apartment you can stay on my couch you don't have to pay any rent you get a shower you clean yourself up i'm not even gonna bust your balls on drug use right now just come back with me you can stay get a job work stay a month two three save your money if you want to move back you got two three grand in your pocket come you know no no dad no, head down again. No, I don't know what the fuck. No. She's 25. I can't grab her by her hair and drag her out. Plus the swamp father over there, Swampzilla, you know, I mean, she's like, well, that guy takes care of us out here, Dad. He, he makes sure that, you know, they already know people on the street that if anybody fucks with me, they're going to get fucking killed. And that's probably true because I walked, we drove around the neighborhood. People are laying out everywhere around there. Those swamp father... Like David Koresh, heroin swamp father guy. He's got his little pod over there. Jesus Christ, man. Seriously. People are scared to get help or they don't try to get help. And maybe in earlier stages, it can get caught. There's functioning alcoholics. Absolutely. There's functioning functioning heroin addicts, too. Not Th shooting up. There is. Who? There absolutely you know is. One? Bring him on the show. Let's have a guess. I don't want to have that person in my house. I don't think so. But, you know, unfortunately, there are people out there that, you know, I knew functioning people. You die people do, quickly from You heroin. know functioning people that were doing functioning uh, methamphetamines. That's fine. That makes you work harder. Shooting up a needle every day into your arm with black tar heroin, not fucking opioids or whatever they're all talking about now. This, this is straight up fucking heroin, people. Spoons, needles, like it's the 1960s. This is what I'm talking about. I know this is what, what I, my about. daughter's going with. That's what. That's I can't what get her off it. It's not going to... I can't get her off it. We've seen her clean up. I'm not going out to San Diego to get her off of it. I'm going out there to make her fucking uncomfortable. Or make her really fucking... Wow, my dad just moved the hell out of here. Or feel like she has something close enough for a I'm making system. Her, I'm just going out there. 
It's the right move, man. It's fucked up, dude. It's the I right fucking, move. You I can't do af- it. I can't, it's going to be good for you, crazy. too. I, like three weeks ago, I had no fucking plans of that. I'm somebody's boss right now. I'm going to be cleaning somebody's toilet in about a fucking two weeks with a pay cut. There's nothing else to do there. They're probably going to make me... They have carpeting. They'll probably make me vacuum. What else does the counter slacky do? Pros will probably think over there at the uh, place that I'm some kind of a corporate spy. Why would an assistant manager come over here and take a big pay cut and just be at work the counter? Oh, oh I'm good. You should tell I've him. got your shirts tucked in. Where's your safety belt? Tell me, Roger Goodell. <laughs> I had Crystal convinced you on TV the other night during the draft. Fuck that. I'm not Roger Goodell. That guy is, looks like me. Did you see? Did I send Hello. you? Did I, I send don't you? look like him, bro. <laughs> Did you see the picture I sent you of your guys' wonderful first-round draft pick? Yes. Fuck mm-hmm. yes. Giants Nation! You did all right in your second and third you round. You go right ahead and yappity do all you want there, Mr. <laughs> Bernie Dyke. Hashtag I love Tommy. What, how, how, what is Tommy? Betty White? He's going to play like, oh, I can still go to him 100. I'm still funny and having a good time. Well, you better hope so because you got nothing else over there. I like that you compared him to Betty White. Pretty much. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm comfortable with that. Old and relevant. And, and uh, I'd sleep with both of them. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say it. So Who would you sleep with first, Betty White or uh, Right now. Probably Betty Wright. Betty White. Because Betty Wright. Who's that? Ooh, wow. oh, yeah, Betty White. Betty- <laughs> I can't figure out which mic is which. And if you give me... Uh, actually, I don't need... I'm going to go ahead and just yeah. start giving content to the show. I'm going to go to the swamp, bro. The swamp? Yeah. Plus, let me just go ahead and go back to this thing, to my transition to PWP of San Diego. Yeah. I decided when I show up on the 15th, my first day of work, Wednesday. I'm leaving. My last day of work here is Wednesday, the 8th. My first day is Wednesday, the 15th. I have a full week. Okay. Monday and Tuesday of that first week, I am using vacation days, so it's paid. So I show up on Wednesday. I've decided that I'm going to go into Mr. Ainsworth's office. That's Ainsworth. Okay. Yeah. The branch manager. Yeah, the branch manager. He said, Hey, Bob, I already met him once with Angie a couple years ago. I've dropped in on one of her college trips at CPWB, toured me the whole warehouse. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Oh, yeah, great, Mr. Ainsworth. By the way, I go by Cody. Like Cody Pendant? Cody. Because Bob is not a California cool name, bro. Oh, you go by Cody. I'm go, I go by Cody. Yes, Mr. Ainsworth, how you doing? But I go by Cody. So Were I'm, you just thinking you'd never meet this guy again? So you just said I'm this. working for him now. I'm no, I know, but when you told him that you I go didn't by, tell him that now. I'm oh. gonna tell him that now. I'm gonna tell him that I when thought I you told him when you no, toured I'm the, telling him that May fifteenth like, oh. on a Wednesday morning when I walk into that fucking place. And he goes, hey, Bob, how you doing? Great to have you here. You're working the counter. I'm like, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, glad, glad to be here. By the way, I, Bob is like kind of like your first name is Bernie, but you go by Keegan. By Dragon. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with, my name is Cody. Cody Pendant. That's it, Cody, because that's California. <laughs> and he's like, all right, cool. So they're going to ca- 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 come in eating like a kettle Cody burrito. to the counter, please, Cody. <laughs> and I'm going to come up, and then I'm going to be like, <laughs> all right, I already hear this one. Like my second day of work. Uh, Cody to the office, please, Cody. And I'll walk into the office. And uh, yes, Mr. Ainsworth. Um, yeah, Cody, you were uh, late today, two days in a row now again. And I'll be like, yeah, yes. bro. Tasty waves, bro. Tasty. It was tasty waves, bro. I couldn't, you know what I'm saying. Cody. Yeah, but that's the second time this week, Cody. And I'll be like, I know, right? And then I'll walk back out. I'll be like, I'll send you the video <laughs> clips, bro. It was killer. And then, like, my third day or fourth day there, he'd be like, uh, Cody, can you come to the office, please? Y- yeah, boss. <laughs> I realize, I see that you're driving a 1991 Honda. That's not very economical or environmental friendly. Do you hate the planet, Cody? Absolutely. Sorry, bro. What should I do? You should ride your longboard to work every day, Cody. Absolutely, bro. All right, I fucking cannot wait till the Pentair uh, rep shows up, has a tabletop, and it's filled with fucking kale and hummus. Yep. Fuck Tracy Thornbird. We're having kale and hummus, bitches. Fucking gonna love it out there. Kale and hummus is good. Kale chips, you just, you know, you cook them in the oven until they get crispy. (laughs) 
And then you just kind of dip them in a little bit of hummus. Are you fucking serious? You really want kale? I would eat some kale. Cody would eat kale. Cody does eat kale. Cody loves kale, bro. Oh, kale. I'm you, a little jealous you're going to get some of that California kale while I'm like back here not. Bro, I'm going like, to grow kale on my patio, bro. Oh, man. You're going to be like Kalezilla. Check it out, bro. You should just tell him instead of Cody that your name's Kale. <laughs> That'd be a cool name. <laughs> That's what Mike White's son's name is. It is. Well, you were the first fucking one with Keegan. That's your middle name, though. That's my first name. Bernie's my middle name. Bullshit. It is. You're fucking lying. Why would I lie about that? I don't know where my documentation is, but there's something <laughs> in here with it. All right. That's really how it goes. We had all the sad parts, the fun parts. Um, let's move along to whatever you want to talk about. Bernie Dyke Podcast! Woo! So, Checking out your levels, fucking your mind up. Oh, man, they're all fucked up.